YouTube. I'm Adam Johnson and this is NFA Review Channel. Today we're going to review the new TBA Suppressors Sicario 22. Uh, this is actually the first uh, Ruger Integral pistol that I've reviewed on this channel. I know that's kind of crazy. Uh, it's actually built on the Ruger Mark IV. So not only is cleaning the suppressor going to be easy, so is cleaning the hose gun. And this can has a little hidden secret about it. Not many people know about it. I didn't know about it till recently. We're going to cover what makes this Integral stand out and so special. Let's get down to the specs. The Sicario 22 comes in at an overall length of 13.25 inches and weighs 38.4 ounces. Uh, now, that is this particular version, meaning I have the stainless Ruger Mark IV, but I opted for the titanium titanium on the front. So I have a titanium tube and a titanium monocore. Uh, those of you out there, if you want different materials, you can do you know, aluminum and, and titanium, titanium and stainless, stainless and stainless, whatever your little heart desires. Uh, I opted for the titanium because I wanted the front of the gun to be nice and light, and it is and all the weight sits back in my hand. It feels really, really nice. And with that beautiful long sight picture, mm, it is a joy to shoot. So just check out their website and you'll see all the options you have and uh, all the color options you have, stuff like that. They also have the 2245 frame as well, but man, that Mark IV, beautiful. Just love it, very classy looking integral. All right, let's go ahead and roll into the field stripping and takedown of this gun so we can discuss more on what's going on on the inside. And I happen to have the super duper tactical takedown tool, which happens to just be a Allen key, which I was so happy to see when this came in because there's nothing worse than having a specialized uh, takedown tool for two reasons. One, uh, you can never find it when you need it. And two, I have a box this big, a tackle box full of all kinds of adapters and uh, takedown tools from all the companies that I deal with and that you guys deal with as well. So it's nice to just have something simple, an Allen key, you can always find it. All you do is you go ahead and remove the monocore. I thought I had it unthreaded all the way. There it goes. And we'll go ahead and set that to the side for now. Now, when you look at the interface between the tube and the gun, I'll show you a close up here. Uh, you can just faintly, faintly see a line. That's how tightly machined this is. And on the titanium, you can faintly see a slight color difference. It's a little darker material than the stainless. And that's just uh, what you get when you're dealing with stainless steel. They did uh, polish this up to match as close as they could. And you really don't notice it. I'm just pointing it out to you. Um, I didn't really notice it that closely, um, but just something to take note of. Uh, once that's off, you'll see an alignment pin at the bottom of the barrel on the hose gun. That's going to align your tube so the sight is always perfect each time you uh, take off the tube. So it's literally just on there with tension. Just pull in opposite directions here. Oh yeah, it's on there. Let's see here. What happens when it's not broken in? There it goes. All right. As I said, really tight fit. There's almost no gap. It's hard to see the seam when it's mounted. So there's your tube and your monocore. Uh, we'll discuss them in just a second. I want to take your attention to the barrel. So they do cut this barrel down one inch and then they throw an 11 degree target crown on there. So it's already going to be a little bit more accurate than when it comes out of the box from Ruger. Um, and you can see it is ported. Now they have other options. If you don't want the porting or you want adjustable porting, they can port this so you can uh, insert and remove plugs to either turn it into a non-ported barrel or remove it. And now you can shoot bulk pack, uh, supersonic ammo, subsonically out of this gun. It'll bleed off just enough pressure um, to not go supersonic. So that's really neat. Um, I don't see any threads in the holes in mine, so mine is just a standard ported option, which is fine, because uh, I wanted just maximum Hollywood quiet, which this gun definitely is. It actually meters at 41 decibels of reduction, which is insane. If you look at the end of the barrel, it is tapered here, okay? Like an 
interrupted thread. The reason they do that is because that interfaces with the same tapered interrupted section in the rear of the monocore where the threads attach. Okay, they do that because when you have this tube on, okay, it's hard to get the threads aligned. Last thing you want to do is cross thread something. So literally, by just feeling it, see look, it'll only go on, it won't go on like this until the two areas interlock. So you just kind of drop it in the tube and it'll slide on like that. So now it's already going to be aligned inside the tube. I'm obviously not putting the tube on so you can see what's going on here. I just back thread just a little bit and then I thread forward and you're good to go. Now it's threading on the gun. So what's actually happening here is you have this section on the front of the tube is going to pull down on the relief cut inside the tube. So you're sandwiching the tube onto the gun over that uh, pin and that's how it works. So you do have uh, an area where all the gas from the porting is going to go and bleed off in this section and then once the uh, bullet passes through here you'll have all the gas trapped in each baffle. This is a slant baffle type monocore um, and actually you can see where he dropped a wire EDM through here uh, to make the cut for the uh, Allen key so that's pretty neat. I like small details like that. As far as cleaning and maintenance on this, guys, don't get too complicated here. Go ahead and just take down your Ruger Mark IV, clean it as you would any other firearm. Take a wire brush and solvent to the uh, port area, keep that all clean. And then uh, this is titanium, so I can't drop it in a, a ultrasonic cleaner. I'm just gonna hit it with a wire brush and some solvent, throw some oil on there and call it a day. It doesn't need to be squeaky clean. Um, but this is not where the party tricks end for the Sicario 22, which leads me to the next part of today's video. The SIC adapter, the SIC. So what they essentially did here was develop the front section. As you can see, they do look exactly the same. The only difference is this has no rifling in it. They recreated the front section of the host gun. And that is for one reason and one reason only. That is to make an integral that you can move to other hosts. Everybody's, uh, you know, gripe about an integral is, well, now you're stuck with it on just one host. Not the case anymore. So basically all you do, we'll go ahead and grab, and we'll grab the little Beretta 92 wannabe. This is a 22 version. Good little trainer gun, by the way. Those of you that have little ones at home, Start them off on this, then move them up to the real deal later. Weapons clear. So essentially all you do is take your SICK adapter, thread it onto your host gun. This is pretty neat. I know a lot of you at home are going, because I, I did the same thing when I learned about this. Now you put on your tube, which this has no alignment pin for obvious reasons. Uh, every gun's going to be different uh, where the thread stop for this. But you just line up the sight so it hangs underneath the gun so it's not in the way. Okay, and then that SICK adapter had the same alignment situation going on that this does. And then you just screw it on down and that's all there is to it. Now you can have an integral with a workaround. So I'll go ahead and get the old Titan here. The sight turned a little bit but you get the picture now, it, it does look a little ridiculous on here. Uh, I'm actually really curious to see what this sounds like. So, you know, I'll bring a host for this and we'll, we'll shoot it with the SICK adapter. Uh, maybe we'll bring this Beretta and we'll see what it sounds like. Um, I'm kind of really interested. Uh, but who cares what it looks like? I mean, come on. If you're shooting this in your backyard for fun, which is basically what, uh, most, what most people buy a 22 suppressor for then you're not going to really care as long as it's quiet and you can shoot your coke cans to hell with nobody knowing so just go ahead and insert the tool unthread it here oh uh, look it started to unthread from the gun i was like wow why is that taking so long so let's see if i can get this core off okay there's the core remove the tube and then you can remove the sick adapter from your host gun so i don't know about you guys but this impressed the hell out of me that's really cool. Um, 
Now this gun is a dead sexy setup the way it is here on the Mark IV. So I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily move it around from host to host because I have a plethora of 22 cans already. However, uh, this is a great option. And uh, for those of you out there that don't want a safe full of 10, 22 cans, uh, you can start off with this, get that really quiet Hollywood suppression levels, and then have the ability to move it around on rifles and pistols. So really, really cool product here. All right, let's set this aside here and let's reassemble this. Throw the tube back on, get that alignment pin. You're gonna see that when you do put it back together, guys, there's an obvious uh, uh, gap going on here uh, between the two. But as you're about to see, when you thread this on, oh, that went on really easy, you will see it compress that gap to nothing. It'd be really hard to even see that this is in fact an integral. And we'll go ahead and tighten it. Uh, the manual states exactly how many, uh, how much torque you should put that on, but you know, I've never been one to read manuals, so <laughs> I just give it the old tightening there and you're, uh, you're good to go. Another thing to note is when you are tightening this down, you are actually putting tension on the barrel. So you have a tension barrel with a target crown on it, which is, again, I mentioned earlier, this is more accurate than uh, just the Ruger right out of the box. So that's another one of the reasons why, because the barrel is under tension. And as you can see, the gap is gone. So uh, really, really just plain sexy looking gun, guys. I mean, let's just admit it. It really does look the part. While it looks a little long, I can assure you that because everything's built in, behind me I have the uh, Ruger 2245 Lite. You guys have seen this on my channel for a couple of years now. This has the Volkhorst and frame on it, so it has the same angles as the Ruger Mark IV here, same everything, with a uh, Silencer Co. Warlock II mounted on the end. So as you can see, it's still over an inch longer. The Sicario is shorter and quieter. So. Uh, Kind of hard to argue now the fact that uh, you can't get an integral. Because now you have versatility across all your hosts and uh, it sounds really good. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and head to the range. Uh, I am going to bring, I, you know what, I'll bring this. That way we can take the suppressor off and we'll get our baseline unsuppressed uh, tone off this host. And then uh, we'll obviously get all the suppression from this. And yeah, I'll bring the Beretta and we'll try the second adapter on that. So a lot of shooting in today's video, guys. We're gonna do the profile view. We're gonna do downrange view, stuff like that to give you a really good idea of what it sounds like from different angles and distances. Let's go ahead and hit that range.
Okay guys, this Sicario is just way too much fun. So I'm gonna try something a little new today. Uh, I'm gonna bring, good lord it's windy. I've been combating this wind all freaking day. Off, off camera I just saw the case blow off the back of my truck, so that's just great. Uh, I'm gonna go way out there next to that fence post. That's about 120 yards away. I'm definitely gonna make sure I'm gonna shoot downwind to my camera so I don't uh, lob a projectile right into my very expensive lens. Do it. I can't wait to get home to the studio and see what that sounded like. Well, everybody, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed today's video. Uh, of course, it's March here in Florida, and all of a sudden we got crazy weather, a cold snap, and then I have like 20 to 30 mile an hour winds all day today. So I was trying to review the audio in between takes. Hopefully it's not covering up the uh, gunshots. Uh, it sounded pretty clear. I got the uh, dead cat on top of my stereo microphone, so it should have uh, muted the wind noise just enough uh, so I apologize if it was a little windy uh, those of you that have been watching my channel for a number of years know that you need to be watch, uh, watching this video with quality headphones that way you can actually hear everything so you should be able to hear you know bullet flight the impact into the dirt berm and then you know the slide shutting and then of course the actual casing if you have good enough headphones landing into the grass but I digress hopefully the wind's not too bad um, the Sicario, very dangerous gun. You are going to go through a ton of ammo. Uh, after I wrap up this little outro here, probably gonna go through and uh, chew up the rest of that uh, 550 box of the Federal Bulk Pack, uh, which, me, which leads me to my next topic. I didn't discern much difference between the Federal Bulk Pack and the Mini Mags. We all know the Mini Mags are loaded pretty hot but it did a really good job of bleeding down the pressure. They sounded almost identical to me. Then we got to the target ammo, the standard velocity stuff, <whistles> Hollywood quiet, magical stuff. Um, today I did something a little different. We shot at 120 yards. I reviewed it real quick off camera with my headphones plugged into the camera and it sounded pretty awesome. It sounded pretty much just like bullet flight, even with the federal bulk pack stuff that's loaded a little hotter. You didn't hear the report from the muzzle at all. You just heard bullets whizzing by and hitting the berm, which is pretty neat. Um, I don't know what else to say, guys. I mean, this is a great, clean looking gun. A uh, little side note, too, that I forgot to mention in the studio. Of course, I left my house without the takedown tool, the Allen key. But luckily, TBA has a workaround. The base pad of the magazine also doubles as a takedown tool. That's why you have all that crazy machining on the front cap here. Uh, so they s literally saved my butt today. I would have had to go find some hardware store because I had to move this from the Sicario to the SICK adapter to the Beretta. So it would have uh, delayed me today. So pretty neat, pretty neat. You can use your mag in a pinch. And let's not forget if you're in or around Florida or close enough to Florida, all right, forget it. It doesn't matter where you live. You need to come to my event on April 14th in Leesburg, Florida. We usually have people flying from all over the US. I know people drive from Ohio, freaking all over the place to come to this event. We're gonna have 20 vendors, half suppressor, half non-suppressor vendors. For 30 bucks, you get to demo their products the entire day, and that includes their ammo. 
And then at the end of the day, each one's gonna raffle off something. Uh, my last event, we gave away over 70 guns and silencers. So you don't wanna miss it. For 30 bucks, you can't go anywhere and shoot for an hour, let alone uh, pay for the ammo. And this is an all day event, 30 bucks from, uh, I think we're gonna start at 10, 10 a.m. It's gonna run till five. So TBA suppressors will be there and they will have this Sicario there for you to demo in person. And they will have periods of unsuppressed and suppressed fire so you can take your ears off and really get to know what these sound like in person. So again guys, thanks for watching today's video. Make sure to click that like and subscribe button. Us YouTubers are under fire from YouTube. They are trying to destroy us. So if you have not already, go to full30.com Set up an account if you don't have one. Go ahead to subscribe to my channel there in case my channel's not around much longer. So we're gonna, all us gun YouTubers, we're gonna build up our channels over on Full 30 in case Facebook, or um, I'm sorry, in case uh, YouTube kicks us to the curb. So we would definitely appreciate all the support, guys. Make sure to click subscribe button, follow, like on all our pages so you don't miss a beat, and I'll see you next time.